High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is set in the background of a search for a mass killer and is entitled, The Trap That Failed. Well, Barry, it all points the one way. Our local maniac's done it again. Uh, not much doubt about it. Gillian Gilmore died in exactly the same way as the other four, and it happened on the first of the month. Ah, the killer's sick gimmick. A victim on the first of every month since April. Uh, no wonder the papers have taken to calling him the White Rabbit Killer. Yeah, well, anyhow, I'm satisfied he does live in the Meacham area. All the evidence points to it. So that's where we'll concentrate future investigations. Right. The only other clue we have is that he probably smokes a pipe, judging from the ream we found under the Gilmore girl's body. And if that doesn't get us anywhere, sir? Hmm. Well, I hope to heaven it doesn't come to it, but we'll have to use one of our lady constables to bait a trap. No. Detective Inspector Jackson. Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Bakewell. Oh, you have? Well, I suppose you've listened to it, have you? Ah, oh. right, well, thanks for calling. I'll send Detective Sergeant Dennison over for it. Thank you. Well, well, well. That was the editor of the Meacham Gazette. Told me he's been sent a tape purporting to come from the killer. Could be a hoax, but, you know, he says there's information in it that might be useful. Drive over and get it, will you, Barry? Bakewell had the sense to save the wrapper the tape was sent in. Posted the day before yesterday at Northgate, midday collection. A housing estate. Aye, and a shoe factory. All right, let's listen to what the free casters say. It's taking the cops a long time to catch me, eh? <laughs> it's the 1st of August tomorrow, so I'm due to kill another girl tonight. Just after midnight, you know, my usual time. I must be better at this than I thought. What I mean is, the cops are getting nowhere, are they? I mean, there must be a right bunch of noddies. What do they expect me to do? Leave my name and address next to the victim? <laughs> Even if I did that, they'd probably get lost trying to find it. <laughs> anyway, I'm sending this to the Gazette so people will know what a rotten police force you've got. So they can put some pressure on to jazz up their performance. Or do I have to go on killing girls on the first of every month and I pay out of old age? <laughs> By the way, I wonder where I can hire a white rabbit outfit. It'll be a nice touch if I wear it to September's killing, eh? Cheerio. I'll send you another message in a week or two. Arrogant pig. What do you think? Not much in it to go on. His accent's no different from most people's around here. Age, oh, about 30, I'd say. Working class, with a chip on his shoulder about the police. Uh, just about sums it up. Look at this tape, though. Huh? I've never seen that make before. Uh, made in Tunisia? Oh, how'd you know that? Have you been there? Oh, bit of good detective work, Chief. It's got Made in Tunisia written on the box. You're getting clever, are you? All right. Go over to operations and see if these are imported into Britain. When you've done that, go and get two copies made of the recording. Hello. Are you Edward Daly? Yes, what about it? I'm Detective Inspector Jackson. This is Sergeant Dennison. I'd like to ask you a few questions. If I don't want to answer them? Well, you can come with us to Northgate Police Station and answer them there. you better come in, then. But I don't know what you're on about. Come in here. Would you like to play this on your tape recorder? What is it? You don't recognise it. Come on, what is all this? We spent several days listening to your voice... We had a chat with the foreman at the factory. He tells me you had a fortnight's holiday in Tunisia last month. What of it? This tape was bought there. It's not a brand obtainable in Britain, 
A lot of people go to Tunisia on holiday. Luke Daly, you can wriggle all you want, but by the time we're finished, you'll be ready to admit authorship of this tape. You're the man in charge of the white rabbit killings, aren't you? Is that what you're trying to pin on me? Uh, you were in Tunisia when Audrey Lockett was murdered. No, Daly. We just think you have a sick mind sending a tape like this to the Gazette. Don't like the police, do you? Did we get on to you quick enough for your liking? You can't do nothing to me. Right. Sergeant, put him in the car while I have a glance over the house. And don't say anything, Daly. Here's my search warrant. Well, Chief, now that we've disposed of this daily freak, what next? Well, I'm afraid we're back to where we started. Yeah, it would have been nice if Daly had been our man. Nasty little Burke. I'll see you gets the book thrown at him anyway. All right, we'll just have to use a trap. June Willis is the ideal girl for it. June? Is that because you know I've been seeing her a lot? Oh, that's news to me, Barry. No, it's because she's the best-looking policewoman in the division and she's an expert in unarmed combat. I don't like it, Chief. I mean, we were thinking of getting engaged. Aye, right, well, her job comes first, and I'll remind you of the same thing. Anyway, don't worry. June will be all right. She'll be well covered, safe as houses. Does she... does she know yet? No, but we can go over and see her. And, Barry, I'm expecting you to be as keen on the idea as I am. Oh, stop fussing like a mother hen, Barry. Of course it's going to be dangerous, but isn't that what a lot of police work's about? I mean, police women all over the country are used as decoys, so what makes you think I have to be treated any differently? Well, you can't blame me for feeling concerned, can you? I mean, you're going to be used as bait to catch a particularly vicious killer. Oh, I can handle myself, love. All I ask is that you see the men covering me aren't too far away if I do need help. Oh, I'll make sure of that. <laughs> And not close enough to make our suspect suspicious. Oh, uh, just drop me off in this corner. It'll save you having to get stuck down a one-way street. Oh, right. Well, here we are. What time shall I pick you up? Where are we going? Well, I was thinking of the Moorcross Sports Club. A bit of dining, whining, gambling and dancing. OK. But I want to be home before one. I'm on early tomorrow. Oh, Pick me up uh, about eight. Well, uh, I'll be there at half seven. Right. Here's the files on the five victims. I want you to study them. I've been through them a dozen times. All right. Now you can make it for the thirteenth time. Oh... Honestly, Chief, I don't know what you expect me to see that I haven't seen before. It's the last day of August, Barry. Your young lady's ready to stick her neck out to catch our killer. We've got to support her, haven't we? Yeah. From now until six this evening, we talk about and think of nothing else. Right. For a start, what did the five victims have in common? Oh, we've been through all that. I will repeat the question. No need, Chief. They are all between 18 and 24. Right. They were all flashily dressed. Sexually dressed would be a more explicit description, but go on. No, oh, they were all blonde. Correct. And they were all unaccompanied. Aye, but two of them had broken away from their male escorts after a tiff. Oh, same thing. No, it's not. It indicates that the killer was hunting for a lone victim and hadn't chosen her in advance. Anyway, carry on. Oh. All of the victims had been to one of the three clubs in Meacham. Which are? The Moorcross Sports Club, the Blue Evan and the Arena. And they left these clubs alone? Yeah. Right, carry on then. Well, they were all strangled by what appears to be a knotted cord. From behind. Furthermore, there was no attempt at rape or any other kind of physical violence. Yeah. Well, last of all, the bodies were propped up in a sitting position. Well, I, I can't think of anything else. Right. Well, we can assume the killer has a car... Two of the victims were found three miles from the centre of Meacham. I'm sure he didn't walk that far with them. Oh, it makes me feel sick, thinking of June floating herself tonight to catch his eye. All sorts of things could go wrong. What bothers me more, Barry, is your personal feelings about this. Perhaps it would be better if you went off and I called in Sergeant Webber to take over, just for tonight. If no, no, please, don't do that. Then be more objective about it. You're letting it cloud your judgment. No, I can do my job. In that case, you'll be able to spot one more common factor in these killings, and it's a very important one. Sorry, Chief. It's got me stumped. 
All right. Why do you think June is being sent to the arena tonight? Why haven't I staked out two more police women in the other clubs? Well, that's a question I was going to ask you. Well, you think about it, lad. The first victim was Marjorie Sims, right? Now, where'd she spent the evening? Uh, uh, the Blue Heaven. Right, and the second victim, Karen Gibson. Moorcross Sports Club. Jenny Winters, third victim. Uh, the arena. So what is all this proving? Winifred Boswell. The Blue Heaven. And the last victim, Gillian Gilmore. Where was she last seen? The Moorcross Sports Club. Well, there's a pattern, Barry, a pattern. Surely you can see it? Oh, yeah. It's been each club in turn, then back to the first. Could be coincidence, but I don't think so. The chances are heavily in favour of our killer picking out his victim at the arena club tonight. Well, what if he decides to choose one of the others instead, though? We end up with another dead girl on our hands. No, we don't. Both the Blue Heaven and the Moorcross Sports Club will have three men in each. It'll be their job to keep an eye on every girl that leaves alone. Six men? Isn't that going to make our cover for June a bit thin? Twelve men, including ourselves. That's enough. In addition, Uniform Branch will be standing by in case we need assistance. The centre of Meacham will be tighter than Scrooge's purse strings. First of all, I must say, you look the part. She looks a right floozy. Exactly, that's what I meant, without being rude. Oh, point taken. <laughs> I feel as though I'm bursting out of these gold lame tights. Right, now, it's almost nine o'clock. I want everyone in position by half past. First, a quick run through. Now, if you are picked up by a suspect, you might be lucky enough to dictate where you go. If so, lure him into Ryston Park and Glen Gardens. Uh, right. Avoid, if possible, the canal and the canal bridge. If he invites you into a car, go. We'll be following close behind. Aye. Now, this pendant here contains a radio <clears throat> microphone with an effective range of 200 yards. The more you can make him say, the easier it will be for us to get a conviction. Now, is that clear? Oh, yes. Okay, now for the prelim. You and Barry go into the arena club and follow broadly the lines we discussed earlier. I hope you're as good an actress as you are a policewoman, June. <laughs> So do I, Inspector. We said we'd do it for real with feeling. Right. I think we'd better be on our way. Barry, when you leave the club, I want you to join me at the operations van, which will be parked on the corner of Carter and Shepherd Street. What are you doing here, Barry? Uh, of course, we've been dancing. And the way some of the fellas are looking at you must increase the temperature. <laughs> Careful, your jealousy's showing. Oh, don't start that, June. You know. We'd be having a real argument. Well, it's gone 11, so it wouldn't matter, would it? Never mind that. I just want you to stop saying I'm jealous all the time. I'm not. It's just that ridiculous gear you're wearing. Well, I'm wearing it for a reason, aren't I? Well, if I ever see you dressed like that again, you can forget all about me. Oh, shut up. You make me sick with all your demands. I'll wear what I like and when I like, see? No, you won't. Not with me, you won't. Well, Scarpa, get lost. Go home and tell your mother I hate you. You leave my mother out of this. Yeah, you can't leave that old crone out of anything. She's always there, putting her nose in. I'm warning you. Don't bother. Just disappear and stop giving me a pain in the neck. I won't be spoken to like that. Oh. Well, that's what I think about you and your stupid mother. Now clear out and leave me in peace. Well, if that's how you really feel, okay, I will. But don't come crawling back when you've regained your senses. Goodbye, June. Ah, Barry, all set up. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Well, is it or isn't it? I was listening on the monitor. It sounded good. Of course it was good. That's because it was serious. Or at least I, I think it was. Oh, well, let's worry about that tomorrow, shall we? Now, what was the situation in there when you left? Oh, not so many people. What with it being midweek? Mostly couples. The better off types. Uh, I left June sitting up at the bar. Good. So all we have to do is wait and see if she gets picked up by a fellow who smokes a pipe. Excuse me, is anyone sitting here? Doesn't look like it, does he? Mind? Help yourself. I couldn't help overhearing the tiff with your boyfriend. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't be. He's a weed. Can I get you a drink? Oh, Ty. I'll have a cherry bee. 
cherry beer and a pint of bitter, please. Right, coming up. Uh, like a cigarette? No, thanks. I smoke a pipe. My name's Jim Griffith. June Willis. Do you live in Meacham? No. Over in Romore. Barry drove me here, so I'll have to take a taxi back. Oh, I'd be more than happy to give you a lift. Won't you take you out your way? I enjoy driving at night. Especially with a pretty girl for company. Davis, I want you to check out that name. James Griffith. Local man. Smokes a pipe. Chances are she's been picked up by the right one. Right, sir. Find out his address and station two men there in case he gets away from us. Right away, sir. Me, Chief? I feel right useless standing here. Ah, oh, you are useless standing there. Go and wait opposite the club entrance. If they leave the car, which it seems they will, you can follow. Right. But don't you try following them on foot. This Griffith fellow might recognise and get suspicious. Would you like to dance again, June? <sighs> Sorry, but I feel bushed. I think I'm ready to make tracks for home. It's only just midnight. I can run you over to Romo in a matter of minutes. It's all darn warm in here. Look, I've an idea. Let's take a stroll along the canal bank. Oh, well, it may sound funny to you, but, well, I have a phobia about water at night. Oh, I see. But uh, I wouldn't mind a walk through Glen Gardens. Oh, you know that little park across the road? Hi. Oh, good, I like that. Another drink before we leave. Uh, no, no, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Well, what do I do now? They've gone into Glen Gardens. All right, stay with me and just take it easy. Four men have them under continual surveillance. Oh, damn it all. We should just arrest him. Might scare him so much he'll confess. You should know better than that, Barry. First, he has to make a physical attack on June before we can move. Oh, it's crazy. He could kill her. Calm down. Beautiful night. If we had the time, it would be possible to count every single star in the sky. Oh, you'd never finish. There are billions and billions out there. <laughs> You're right. Doesn't it make you feel uneasy just thinking about it? I often think about it. Uh, but I suppose we'll never know what's out there, will we? Not in our lifetime, anyway. <laughs> Shall we sit down here for a while? Oh, I'm easy. How easy are you? What do you mean? Oh, you know what I mean. Here, keep your hands to yourself. I can't do that, love. Not with you. Yeah, I'm going. Oh, no, you're not. You know, it's a month to the day when I last sat in this park with a pretty girl. So what? She was blonde like you. Gillian Gilmore. Ever heard of her? Aye, I have. Now stop trying to frighten me and let go of my arm. At least she let me kiss her before I used this. Can you see it? <sighs> what is it? The length of cord with three knots in it. It goes round the neck. <laughs> like this! Oh! oh no, 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 let go of me! She did me! He's attacking her. Right, move in and take him and make it snappy. Come on, Barry, we've got the blighter. I'll break every bone in his body if he's hurt her. Now you stop worrying. June can handle herself. And now he'll have four of my men jumping all over him. What do you mean he isn't here? He weren't here. He were in the clinch with a girl when I called you up. When we moved in, they were gone, disappeared. People don't just disappear, man. How are you placed? <laughs> Roberts was over there. Thompson was in those bushes by the statue. Jenkins was behind the fountain and I was here on to the side at railing. It's bright moonlight. I don't see how he could have slipped by you. Sergeant Adams, get all the men you can muster and search every inch between here and the canal. Very good, sir. You said nothing would go wrong. Well, it has. If you want to see June Willis again, Barry, I suggest you stop recriminations and start thinking. Well, I'm going to help the search. You stay here with me. Now, Luke, they didn't go any of their four possible directions and they couldn't fly up in the air. Where does that leave us? Facing the impossible. No, it doesn't. Now, just wait. They were sitting here on this bench, weren't they? Now, cast your torch on the ground. Yeah, look, huh? there, a manhole. It's the sewers, Barry. That's where he's got her. 
Can you see? For those vital seconds, it was screened by these bushes. Clay! Aye, aye, sir. Get three men. We're going down the sewer. And tell Sergeant Adams to cancel the search and call out the borough surveyor. Aye, sir. I want the plans of the whole sewerage system. of time before they realize you must have taken to the sewers. Shut up or I'll knock you out cold again. I suppose you can now you've tied my hands with your precious strangling cord. You're lucky I haven't used it properly on you yet. I thought it was too easy. Should have guessed it was a police trap. Anyway, if they do find out where we are, what better protection can I have than a hostage policewoman? That won't save you. I know these sewers like most people know their homes. After all, I work in them. Come on, girl, let's start moving. Come on, you can move your feet faster than that. Stop. I, I've been thinking. I'll do the thinking. You're going to kill me anyway. Isn't that right? Depends on how much trouble you give me, girl. Well, I can't give you much tied up like this. Jones! <gasps> Can you hear me? Damn, there's a light ahead. And they'll be coming up behind us, too. Jones! Are you there? Barry! Shut up or I'll... Be... Barry! Cleaned up a bit. Now, what can I say, June, except well done? Oh, well, that's enough, Inspector. Thanks. Oh, thank heavens it's all over. I nearly died when Clayton said you'd disappeared with Griffith. Well, I was going to ask you about that. You were ready for him. You're an expert at unarmed combat, yet the blighter managed to overcome you. Well, being an expert at the martial arts is one thing, but when your opponent is also an expert, it's not quite so simple. Ah. <laughs> if all I could do a thing, he chopped me right under the left ear. And the next thing I knew, we were down the sewers. And then your radio mic failed. I went into the water. You should tell Boffins to supply us with waterproof gadgets. <laughs> of course, I, I'll put it in my report. Hey, if he was such an expert at the martial arts, how did you manage to knock him cold in the sewer? He was nearly drowned when I reached him. Well, you instinctively stopped when he heard your second call. And his throat was a perfect target for my foot. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make you a right wife, Barry. Ah, uh, all right. Well, at any rate, I hope so. Don't count your chickens, Barry Dennison. You're too jealous for my liking. We haven't made up from that quarrel we had in the club yet. You, uh, you were serious, all the things you said. Well, I'm ready to apologise, if you are. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.